Have you ever wondered what the pros and cons were of potentially joining a real estate team? There are several items that can help you out in joining a team and there's definitely some downside to it as well. Today we're going to go over both of those. So let's get started. Hey, this is Hank Sorensen with the YouTube channel Go Get a Listing. I get asked very often by agents thinking about joining a team as to whether or not they should make the jump. I also get asked just as often by rainmakers of potential teams as to whether or not they should hire on their first buyer's agent. So we're going to go over both the pros and the cons from the buyer's agent side because that's normally the question that I get asked. So let's get started. Pros. Number one, it's gonna potentially be easier to lead gen. Now it's rare, it's very rare that I've talked to a team Rainmaker that doesn't somehow, some way provide leads for the agents on their team. Usually nowadays that's gonna be in a digital format. Either they're getting Zillow leads, bold leads, leads from Trulia, Realtor.com, or they're getting a ton of calls off of their pre-existing listings that the buyer's agents on their teams can access for purposes of generating buyers. So it's rare that you're not going to have built-in leads already created from the team. However, it's just as often that the rainmakers will assume that the buyer's agents on their team, and I call them buyer's agents because traditionally they'll go after buyers. Some of the rainmakers will also allow buyer's agents to also service listings, but it's not too often that they allow that. Ask the rainmaker on your team for definitive information on that as to what the scope of your duties allow. But it's very common that the buyer's agents will have to generate their own leads, meaning you've got to go out and solicit out of your own database and generate your own leads. And think about that from the buyer's agent's perspective. If you were just using the team leads in order to get business in the front door, you're basically using the team only as a bank. And no rainmaker wants to be used just as a bank. They would respond to you as a buyer's agent saying, well, look, you can be your own bank. If you're gonna rely 100% on me, you can go generate your own leads. I, as the rainmaker, wanna find a buyer's agent who's gonna go out and do independent lead generation over and above the leads that I'm providing. So that's how usually lead generation is gonna be handled. You'll get some, but it's not enough to you know, float your, ex your whole existence on the team. The rainmaker is gonna want you to do more. Number two, and I'll get back later as to why there's an asterisk by this number. I'll come back to it again at the very end of the video. That was just a reminder for me. But number two, faster skill development. The Rainmaker is going to want you to sit down with them and or other members of the team, especially if you are a new or newer agent, in order to hasten your skill development. They'll have you do script practice, role play, objection handlers. You know, they'll have you do role play on a buyer's uh, pre-qualification, usually on the phone and then in an actual meeting. So because of the skill development, that's going to get you faster down the line to earning income, which is never a bad thing. Number three, fewer expenses. There are many duties that you can do every day as a buyer's agent in order to generate revenue. Lead generation, negotiating contracts, and running appointments. Everything else is revenue servicing, which should be left to an admin. If you were a single agent, you would be doing all of that, both revenue generating and revenue servicing. But here, most of the revenue servicing activities are going to be pushed off onto an administrative assistant. All of the duties associated with generating um, uh, buyer packets for showings, um, open house flyers, all of that, marketing materials, everything that you would normally do from an administrative side, like ordering home inspections, appraisal surveys, that's gonna be taken care of by support members on the team. So. When you get to number three, having fewer expenses, you don't have to pay people to go do that. You don't have to pay for the supplies associated with the packet generation or open house flyer generation. There are some rainmakers, in fact, that will go so far as to pay your realtor association dues, your MLS dues, your marketing materials. You know, some do, some don't. That's a question that you have to ask the rainmaker when you're interviewing them. And take a note here, as much as they're interviewing you in order to become a member on their team, you should be also interviewing them regarding the value proposition that the Rainmaker is bringing to the table. If the Rainmaker can't tell you in very definitive terms, here's what I offer, here's what I offer, here's what I offer, you might want to get a second or third interview of another Rainmaker on another team. Number four, 
you're going to have an absolute library of knowledge and support mechanisms on the team. And so instead of getting on, say, the office Facebook page and hoping and praying that someone's going to come with an answer to your question, or maybe trying to track down the broker who may or may not always be easily available, that's the rainmaker's job on your team is to have someone readily available on the team, usually them, if not a director of operations, that can answer your questions very, very quickly because time means money. Especially now when you're trying to get an offer accepted and you might have 10 or 12 other offers pending at the same time by other potential buyers. Uh, also support, that goes as far as uh, all of the admins working on your paperwork, to marketing assistants, to transaction coordinators, to compliance. Larger teams have all of that already built in so that you can stay in your revenue generating lane. Again, lead generation, running appointments, negotiating contracts. So that's the lane you want to stay in. Support helps you do that. So these are all the pros and obviously there are cons. So let's talk about those as well. Number one, first and foremost, I always get asked about it. Hey, Hank, what do you think the commission that they pay is? Well, I don't keep track of that even with teams in my own offices because that can change depending on the agent based on the skill set and what type of transaction it is. Um, but you are definitely as a buyer's agent going to earn a smaller commission normally. And this is just very general. You should definitely ask your rainmaker as to what the amounts are. But normally a rainmaker is going to start you off as a buyer's agent on nothing better than a 50-50 split with the team, meaning that any agent dollar that comes into the door with the team uh, generating revenue off of a transaction, 50% of that dollar belongs to you and 50% of that dollar belongs to the team. And the team uses that money in order to fund number one, a profit for the team, which goes to the rainmaker, number two, support, number three, marketing materials, number four, lease space. So there's a ton of operational expenses that the team incurs because you exist. So you will get a smaller commission. Definitely talk to the Rainmaker about how that's structured. Also, you wanna talk all, uh, to the Rainmaker about personal deals. So if you have your mother, your father, you, uh, your uncle, your cousin, your brother, that is going to have a transaction, talk to the Rainmaker about how personal deals are handled on the team and if it's on the same commission schedule or a different commission schedule. Also, you should put it crystal clear with the Rainmaker as to what your commission splits are on team generated leads versus self generated leads. Some teams handle them with no difference between the two. Some teams handle self generated leads with a little commission bump because they didn't have to pay for that lead. You went and generated that yourself, say in line at a Starbucks or in line at a grocery store. Second con, limited time off and there is accountability. So limited time off. The number one thing that I hear from agents when I ask the question, hey, why'd you get into real estate? Uh, the number one answer is, is I, I can make up my own schedule. Now, for all of us who have been in the business as long as I have, which is 20 plus years, we laugh when someone says something like that because you can just say, sure, you're only gonna work 14 hours a day. Pick your 14 hours, which 14 hours you're gonna work. Uh, that's what we say to ourselves, having been in the business as long as we have. But with limited time off, what I mean is this, if you were just a single agent, you could take time off and go to your daughter's dance recital or your son's karate lesson, or you could go out of town on the weekend uh, to your son's soccer tournament or, or your daughter's softball game or whatever. If you were on a team, that's not gonna happen because the team is going to mandate that you host so many open houses during the course of a month, that you uh, attend so many shadowings of other agents, especially if you're, you are a new or newer agent. So you're gonna, have much, you're gonna have much more limited time off as far as a new agent on the team. Also accountability, don't be shocked, don't be surprised if the Rainmaker says, hey, come in, uh, every single Tuesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. because we're going to lead generate as a team during that time. And no is not an answer. It's not a question as to whether or not you wanted to do that. That was an order. You are an employee of the team. Uh, even if you're an independent contractor and, you know, I won't get into the nuances of state versus state on employee versus independent contractor status. Suffice it to say, if you don't do what the Rainmaker says, you're not going to be on the team anymore. And I don't know any Rainmakers that allow a huge time off uh, or not to be held accountable, especially if the team is paying for leads for you over here. If the team is paying for leads through Boomtown, if the team is paying for leads through Zillow, they're going to hold you accountable because the team is going to want to know what the return on investment on those leads are. 
And if you just get to the leads every now and then, the Rainmaker is not going to push those leads to you. They're going to take them away and put them with someone else, which kind of defeats the whole purpose that you're joining the team to begin with. Number three, no personal brand. You're not gonna have your own personal brand. A lot of people get into real estate and they wanna make a name for themselves. They want the public to know that, hey, I am now a real estate agent and based on that, you should send business to me. You will do that as a buyer's agent on a team. However, all of the business is gonna be done under the name of the team. Even if you secure a listing in line at Starbucks and your Rainmaker goes one step farther and says, hey, you can go and service that listing, meaning you can attend all the showings, all of the buyer leads come to you, great, fantastic. But the name on the sign is gonna be the name of the team. It's, you might at your best get a rider up on top with your name on it, but as far as the sign on the property, that's gonna be in the name of the team. All of the advertising for the property is gonna be in the name of the team. Every Facebook post, every email signature block is gonna be in the name of the team. So you're not going to be establishing a huge personal brand for you while you're doing that. And you know, let's be real, most buyer's agents don't stay on teams forever. And when you eventually move on, you know, there's a probably a 70 to 80% chance of a likelihood that you will, you're going to want to say to people, hey, now I am my own brand. It may take you a little while if people have, for the say the past four years, associated your name with the personal brand of the team instead. Number four, on the con list, team personalities. If you are just a single agent, you are a team of one. Presumably you're gonna get along with yourself, but if you are forced to be in accountability sessions, if you are forced to be in lead generation sessions, if you are forced to do other things associated with the team like get togethers and happy hours and uh, team building events and stuff like that, you're gonna to have to deal with team personalities. And look folks, let's be real. If you've got 10 people in a room, the chance that all 10 personalities are gonna get along, it's not gonna happen. Someone on that team is going to rub you wrong. Deal with it, move on, just understand that's a function of life and you're gonna to have to deal with it while you are a member of the team. So, and I meant to get back to this number two. The reason that I put an asterisk by number two is I commonly get asked when agents go over this list with me, Hank, what's the most important one? What's the one that, I, that you think I should really lean on in making my decision? This one right here, faster skill development. If you can, there is nothing that can replace you, become not, you becoming knowledgeable in the industry faster than anyone else. That helps you start earning income faster than anyone else. This is going to get you farther, faster than, any, than being a single agent ever will. You will learn more by being on the team in six months than you would have as a single agent maybe in the first three years. Just because you're gonna have so many ups you're gonna have so many uh, at-bats with the team, so many buyer's appointments, so many listing appointments, so many objection handlers handled, uh, so many role plays done. It's just going to give you an opportunity here to become so much more knowledgeable and in income producing quicker than you were as a single agent. So based on that, I always lean on this as the most important issue, the faster skill development. But that's my personal opinion if you put eight real estate people in a room, you might get nine opinions on that, and that's fair. So I hope this has been educational for you guys today on the pros and cons of joining a real estate team. If so, I would appreciate you guys uh, hitting the like button, comment down below, hit the subscribe button so that you get a notification every time I uh, drop another video. Thanks.